Here is a video that will be helpful for anyone who needs to figure out the post height that will be supporting a ridge beam for either new construction or even remodeling. And the height of the walls will not matter because we will be adjusting for them depending upon whether or not the post goes all the way down to the bottom plate on the first floor framing or whether it is going to be sitting on top of the floor sheathing like we have here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a string. However, most carpenters aren't going to use a string. They're just simply going to measure from one point to another point and then do their calculations. However, if there are any variations in the concrete footing or any part of the framing, then you could end up being off a little bit depending upon those variations. And something that might cause those variations would simply be assembling a section like this with multiple pieces to where on one side of the building you might end up with a section without any gaps in it at all and really tight framing. However, on the other side, you might have a gap between the bottom of the plywood and the top of the joist. And something like this can create problems when you're going to be using more than two posts or trying to make everything work perfectly. So the first thing on our list we will need to accomplish will be to gather some type of a reference point. And in this case, it will be from the string to the top of the bottom plate. And this measurement should be the same for the walls on each side. Now, even though you wouldn't have done this yet, let's just go ahead and run through some of the measurements that I have already created from our scaled model, including what the rafters would look like. Take a look at the bottom, and this is very important here because in order for the method that I'm going to show you in this video to work, the bottom measurement here, or the plumb measurement, will need to be the same at the bottom as it is at the top. And if it isn't, and you are going to make it different, then simply subtract the difference or add the difference to the height of the post. And another thing I want to point out, we are not going to be going to the center of the post with this one. However, we will need to figure out the position of the post and where it's going to be located. And in order to do that, you're going to measure the overall span of the building. Because keep in mind, none of this stuff is going to be here. So measure from the outside to the outside and then divide that measurement by two and then subtract half the thickness of the post because the post is going to be located in the center of the building. And then once you have figured out the location of the post, you can go ahead and measure from this point to this point, which will be the same as from this point to this point. And then this is the number right here we are going to use to calculate the height of this distance here or the distance from the top of the string to the top of the ridge. So let's go ahead and break out our trusty calculator and the roof pitch we are going to be using will be an 8 and 12 roof pitch. So the first thing I want to do is multiply 9 times 8 because for every one foot we go horizontally we're going to go up 8 inches vertically. So let's multiply 9 times 8 to give us 72 and then you can go ahead and write that number down on a piece of paper and then in order to convert the 10 and a quarter inches to a decimal that will represent feet we will simply divide 10.25 and then hit the divide symbol and then we're going to divide that into 12 and then we're going to take this decimal here and then multiply it times 8 to give us 6.83. And 6.83 is going to be somewhere between 6 and 3 quarters and 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now if I add 72 to this, I'm going to get 78.83 or 6 foot 6 and 7 eighths inches, providing us with the difference between the top of the beam and the top of the wall framing and the measurement we need to calculate the overall length of our post. 
And in order to do that, we can simply add these two numbers together to provide us with the overall height. And then we can go ahead and subtract the height of the ridge beam from that measurement to get the height of the post. And to figure out the post height on the other side, all we would need to do would be to measure from the top of the framing plate to the top of the bottom plate or the section that the post is going to be sitting on. For example, if the post was going to be sitting on top of a post base connector, then we would be measuring from the top of the post base connector to the top of the framing plate or the top of the string and then adding the difference that we have calculated here to those measurements to find that post height and we could do the same with the post in the center by using a string or measuring from the wall framing or we could simply use the measurement for this post here and add an inch and a half to it or add the thickness of the wall framing plate to provide us with the length of this post. And if this was going to be a full length beam, we could simply install the beam first and then measure the post. And that, my friends, is how I would figure out a post in the center with a full length beam. And if all of that makes sense, then you can stop watching right now. However, for those of you who need a little more information or you're looking for an example that starts without a roof or any posts or any rafters, let's go ahead and start with this. And since we need to figure out the point from the post to the outside of the wall, as I mentioned in the video, we will need the overall length of the building. And this measurement will be from the outside of the wall on one side all the way through to the outside wall on the other side. And then we're going to divide this number by half so that we can find the center of the building. And the center of the building is also going to be the center of the post. However, it will not be the measurement that we are going to use because we're going to need to subtract half of the width of the post. So if our post is going to be three and a half inches, we're going to need to subtract half of that which will be one and three quarter inches. And this is the point of reference we are going to use to figure out the difference in the height of the top of the wall framing where the rafter is going to be sitting on top of and the top of the post where the other end of the rafter is going to be sitting on top of. Next up, let's go ahead and make things a little simpler by getting rid of the building and then starting with a 4 and 12 pitch. So what I've done here is used my scaled model to figure out the difference before I break the calculator out. Now this is a 4 and 12 pitch, which means that we're going to take the number 9 and multiply it by 4. Four. And then we're going to write this number down on a piece of paper. Now we're going to clear that and then take 10 and a quarter inches, which as a decimal will be 10.25. And then we're going to divide that by 12. And this decimal here will represent 10 and a quarter inches in our measurement. So I'm going to take this number here and multiply it times 4 and then add 36 to it. And I'm pretty sure this decimal here is going to convert to this number here almost right on the money and provide you with an example of how you can calculate a roof that is going to have a pitch with a 4 to 12 ratio. Or for every 12 inches of measurement, we're going to go up 4 inches. Or for every 2 feet, we're going to go up 8 inches. And 3 feet, we're going to go up 12 inches. So that ratio can be used to calculate the height that we're going to need to figure out the length of our ridge post. Now, if you have any questions at all, or if there's something I missed, or there's a mathematical error in one of my video examples, then feel free to let us know in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy our videos and want to see more of them.